Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel, American Viscountess. I'm Julie Montague, the American Viscountess. Um, thank you so much for watching all of my videos. Um, this one is a part two of one that I think I, it's fair enough to say has done really, really well. And that was my top 10 culture shocks part one. So this is part two, but before we get into it, Steven here has something to say to all of you. I deeply apologize for saying that Canada and America are basically the same. Yeah. You've gone to Canada and that's pretty much the same thing. But that annoys me Don't say well. that! <laughs> <laughs> for any offense that I've caused to your country, I am truly sorry. But anyway, let's see what we're talking there about There we go. <laughs> okay. And he will not make that mistake again. Um, here we go. So, um, thank you, Stephen. That was very kind. Um, comment below if you appreciate Stephen's apology. <laughs> right. So we wanted to do a part two because part one was so popular. One of the things that made part one really popular was um, the words. So the words, the different words between British words and um, American words. It was so popular that we're doing an entire video on that. So we're going to be using the comments uh, that you guys had about uh, part one culture shocks, but in particular, the different words. We're using those comments and I'm going to be testing Stephen and Claire on a different video and lots more words to test your knowledge coming soon. Part two of the top 10 culture shocks. And I think for me, the biggest, well, there's a lot of shock, culture shocks. The biggest culture shock with my children, having um, four of them over here, was that they all speak and forever more will with a British accent. That's, that's it. You're saying it's like a bad thing. <laughs> so, that's a good thing. It's, it's not a bad thing, but I mean, I wish that one of them, you know, I've got four children, could one have the American accent? How would you both feel if sort of you married, you know, I don't know, you married a Canadian, Stephen? And, and the child well, had a... Part of your family is Canadian. That's yeah, that, one of the reasons why I apologise, because yes. yes, I don't want to be um, barred from the country. I was say, I've got will, a visa. You will so. be welcome in their house. No, that's that's right. right, you're both going to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah you absolutely had yeah. to do that apology. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, they're going to Canada. I'm not sure, I feel conflicted. I think it would be better than, better than my accent, because I'm originally from Liverpool. Um, I'm, I think my accent, or the people the Liverpudlians, or Scousers as we're called, I don't like that accent. It's very harsh and, and I just don't like it. So. But you don't have that accent. No, no. I like your accent. Comment below if you like Stephen's <laughs> accent. Can you, everybody, by the way, when you hear Stephen and Claire talk, can you tell a difference in their accents? So I can only because I've been here for over 20 years. But what would yeah. you say is the biggest difference between your two accents? Um, we tease each other on the way we say butter. 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 Butter? You mean butter. like the butter yeah. that you put in yeah, bread? Like yeah, Wait, yeah, How yeah. do you say it? I, butter. 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 Butter, yeah. Butter. <laughs> butter. Yeah. Butter. Yeah. Butter. That's, yeah, butter. butter. That's a little yeah. bit more, I guess, I don't know. That's a North and South thing. Yeah. Yeah. North and South yeah. thing. Yeah. And then yeah. the Amer American just says butter. Yeah, without any teas. Without any teas <laughs> and with an er at the end. Yeah. Butter. Yeah. It's like water. Three right? How do you say water then? Um, water. Water. Yeah, it's always a tea, yeah. Water. yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. So see, accents, very, very difficult. When I married my husband, I always said, we will not send any of our children to boarding schools. It's a thing over here. Lo and behold, the youngest is at boarding schools. I really had to get my head around this, but it's different than sending your children to American boarding schools in, in many ways. It's just how they do it over here. Of course, the other three children went to a normal, what we call day school, as in they go to school during yeah, the day, normal school. <laughs> normal school, and they come home at night. But the boarding schools here are really well known. I mean, obviously that's where Prince William and Prince Harry, well, an entire royal family was educated, was in boarding schools, but my youngest chose to go to boarding school. And I have to say, it is the best thing for him. He loves it. He doesn't like London. He wants the country and he loves boarding school. But what is it, the two of you, what is it about boarding schools over here? Yeah, I mean, you worked at one. I was gonna say, I worked yeah. at boarding school. Yeah. I never went to you, boarding school. Right, I but worked. you worked at one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a tradition, isn't it? It's, it's, there are lots of extracurricular activities there and, and they do, 
they do get immersed in sport and rugby and, mm. and those things and are quite And school on a Saturday as well. So the school yeah. that I worked at, they had yeah. that, like morning school on a Saturday. Yeah, I think there's yeah. just yeah. A, a lot of extracurricular, but I mean, going to school on Saturday, that would yeah. be well, appealing to me, but that, yeah. clearly <laughs> it is to Nestor. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys know about this? Because I know you, because you've never been to the States. No. You've never been to the no. States. But you've been to Canada. Yeah. You've Which been... isn't the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> But, so you know that in America, we put ice in everything. Yes, yeah. Ice is in yeah, everything. Yeah. Here, when I, would for, when I first moved here, I'd be like, is there any way I could get some ice for that? And like, at that time, over 20 years ago, most restaurants would be like, no, we don't have ice. There's, um, I mean, no. they're coming out fairly, there's a few more of them on the market nowadays, but the big sort of fridge freezers, which have got the ice compartments in them. Mm. That's a new thing here. And yeah. I assume, yeah. It's, it's that. just yeah. normal over That's in right. the States. And yeah. with the water dispensers. Yeah, yeah. 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 That is yeah, you're, do, you're doing here. really well if you've got one of those. Yeah. yeah, like over here, if you have an ice dispenser connected to your refrigerator with water that comes out, I mean, That's, you are yeah. golden. Yeah. Like that doesn't, <laughs> I have never, I only think I've seen that at like one person's house. Yeah, very few. It's very, very, very few. few people have that. They just don't have that. Strange. Mm. I want to talk about also over here, fizzy water. We call it fizzy water. Fizzy water is super popular. Mm. So yeah. sparkling water, fizzy water is un... I just don't remember that in America, but maybe because comment down below if now in America, fizzy water, sparkling water is super popular because over here, it is, it's more popular than I think still water. Yeah, I, I, yeah, all restaurants will, will offer both. Yeah. I, I, I've never I've never seen the appeal, but I don't you've like got, sparkling water yeah. personally. Yeah, well, you, you're too, you're too bad examples. But no, Luke, Luke, <laughs> yeah. loves it. Luke loves the sparkling water. Yeah, I don't know. Luke loves, my yeah. husband loves sparkling water, and now I love sparkling water, and yeah. actually all of our kids love sparkling water. Yeah. So there you go. This is going to go back to part one a little bit more. I'm going to elaborate about the weather. Most of you said, yeah, you agreed with me that the weather is, you know, those of you who have visited England or the UK or Scotland, the weather isn't great. But the point I want to make about that is if you look at, let's say, I don't know, San Diego. So San Diego in America has like over 300 days out of 365 days of sunshine. Over here. Too much. Basically, it's the Wait. opposite. It's the opposite. We literally. I swear we must have 300 plus days of cloudy, <laughs> rainy weather. It certainly feels right? like that, yeah. And yeah. the summers, we get one week of summer in the summer. Yeah. Don't you agree that there's one week that yeah. it's warm and you're like, this is our summer? Yeah, we, we, I remember three years ago, there was a re it was really hot for about three months. But we'll be talking about that for decades. Because that was extraordinary. <laughs> Every other summer, it's just been compared but to that. But then that was the year that I was in Canada at that point, and they had oh. had a heat wave, and then as soon as my family and I got over there, rain. rain. And then my dad it. stayed in the UK, and he was messaging us like, we've got a heat wave over yeah. here, and we've, like, we've got thunder and lightning over By here. By heat wave, we mean like high 20s, 20 yeah. degrees Celsius, which it is... It might hit Which 30. is like high 70s, yeah. early 80s, yeah. or yeah. low so 80s. Not, I mean, not, not cracking the flag. Yeah. But. I remember there was a heat wave in like 2006, and I only remember that because yes. I was pregnant yeah. with Nestor. And everybody still today talks about the heat wave, yeah. which was now yeah. 15 yeah. years yeah. ago. Yeah. We haven't had a heat wave since then, have we, like that? No, uh, well, the 2018 it, one was pretty extraordinary. 2018, but it was right. it didn't rain. It, I mean, it didn't rain for right, three 2018. months, which was extraordinary. And then I'm if we get snow, we'll talk about that for oh, yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years Just years a little bit of snow. That yeah. much. That white, much. And then all white schools Christmas, are cancelled. Yeah. Mm. You get this much <laughs> snow, <laughs> yes. yeah. and all schools Chaos. are cancelled. I grew up in Chaos. Chicago. Like, we wouldn't get if schools closed unless it was like literally five feet of yeah. snow. Yeah. No, it causes absolute chaos. Everything's cancelled. The weather. Everyone's the weather. crashing on the roads. It's, it's quite it's fun. It's the weather. We're still talking about the weather. Moving on from the weather, the pub. Let's just talk about the pub. Everybody goes to the pub. So I now have, by the way, the drinking age here is 18. So I want to put that out there before I talk about um, our 20 year old, who his favorite thing in the whole wide world is to go to the pub. And I honestly think that you go to the pub with your mates to get a pint. You're not necessarily always going to the pub to, you know, sort of- Have a meal or, yeah. or anything like that. Yeah it's, yeah, it's just to have a drink. It's just to have a drink, yeah. to have a pint. Yeah. I think that was the biggest thing when lockdown, because over here it was quite extreme mm. and, um, uh, the two older children were in Edinburgh, going to school at University of Edinburgh. And when the pubs outdoors, do you remember that was that period, yep. like you could totally go to outdoors. a pub yep. only outdoors, 
everybody flocked the to the pubs yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they were all outdoors because it was just like the pint is back, yeah. the pub is back. You had to book for a drink. Yeah. You had to yeah, go on their to, websites yeah. and, and book a spot outside. Queue down the road. Yeah. Down. Hours on end. Hours on end just to get that pint at a pub. There is nothing like getting a pulled pint yeah, at a pub. Yeah, a good, a good draft beer, uh -huh. warm beer. <laughs> well, it has to be at a certain temperature from a cellar. So a speaking of pints, I mean, obviously I'm a beer drinker. I love a pale ale. I'm a lager yeah. pale ale, but what are you, Stephen? Um, I like lagers pale ales, yeah. yeah. Nice. Just like Somerset beer. cider. Oh, that's oh my true. god, yeah, that's right, you're a cider, cider girl. A cider drinker. Yeah. That's right, a yeah. cider drinker. Yeah. Love that. One thing about pubs is the pub quiz, which we should probably do. If you want to see a video of us doing a pub quiz, <gasps> yeah. then hit the like button and we'll, we'll That is we'll a great that. idea. We can but do a pub. they're really popular. Yeah, pub, and they're on like Monday nights or Tuesday yeah. nights, yeah. and you have to book a table, pub quiz. Pub quizzes are so popular. I'm yeah. rubbish at them. It's yeah. my word, rubbish. So we will do a pub quiz. Comment below if you want us to do, Claire, Stephen, and I, to do a pub quiz. And we will have a cider. You yep. can have an ale or a pale yep. ale. And I'll, yep. have an, I'll have a lager, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll add, we can do it at the Coach House, our cafe here at Mapperton, and we can pull yeah. the pints yeah. and do a pub quiz. We'll, um, we'll think of a pub quiz name as well, which is always quite... Quite yeah, yeah. So if they you need have, to be witty and British. Witty yeah, and witty British. and British. Yeah. I'll leave it over to you, unless yeah. some of you have some down below. Comment. Next culture shock. Hollywood blockbusters arrive much later here. Yes. I asked us what else, Stephen, you were telling me. Technology. <laughs> so I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a new laptop. I like my technology, as you've probably all gathered, but the new Apple laptops have been out in the States for weeks now, and I'm waiting another two or three weeks to get it. And it's more expensive. Yeah. I can't work that one out. It's You're, VAT or something, isn't it? We're going to get on that culture yeah. shock too, a yeah. thing called VAT. Mm. So anytime a big Hollywood blockbuster comes out, we don't get it at the same time as the States. We have to wait. Sometimes it's like months. Sometimes it is yeah. months. It just yeah. depends on the deal. But we never get it um, at the same time. No. This is why we love YouTube, because you That's all right. get it at the same That's time. That's right. This is why we love YouTube. Hit subscribe down below if you love YouTube as much as we do. So that moves me on to the next thing. Things are more expensive here. And it's not just because of the pound to the dollar, which of course fluctuates, but we have a thing called VAT. I've learned to love VAT only because it's hidden. So when I go to the shops and something says that it's 15 pounds, it's 15 pounds. I don't then have to dig through my wallet to find, well, back in the day before we could tap, to find change because when I would go up to the till or cash register, it would be 15 pounds plus 9% tax and then it would be something else. But our VAT here is 20%. When I moved to this country, I think that... It was 17 and a half, which is even more confusing. Yeah, yeah it was 17 and a half. work that one out. It was 15% beforehand, wasn't it? And then I it was 17 so. and a half, yeah. and then it was 20. Yeah, a while ago. I've, I've only it's different for different rates as well. So for hospitality, for the pubs, it's 5%. For some yeah, things, for food. it's different, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Different. But like clothing, 20%, anything you buy, there was, um, laptop. It was 20%. a kind of political scandal a little while ago where there was a difference between cold pasties, oh, the things that you, Cornish pasties that you eat, or hot pasties. And one had 5% tax and one had 20% tax. So That's it's right. confusing. It's really no, confusing. Because hot food has 20% tax on it, yeah. cold food doesn't. I've had a lot of you ask a question is what the heck is an aga? And it is an AGA. It's an AGA. Don't ask me what that stands for. I probably should know. I think it's a Swedish thing, isn't it, AGA? The company's Swedish. I but mean, it, it's should... become so popular over here. Mm. So popular over here. And this gets heated by oil. It is on all of the time, apart from the summer months, when we have that one week of summer, we <laughs> turn it off. But this used to be when, because when houses like this weren't heated because of the great expense and that would go into it, um, the warmest um, place, room in the house was the kitchen because of the aga. So everybody just came in here and it still is the warmest place in the house. So that brings me on to the next culture shock, which kind of goes back to my etiquette video, um, which thank you very much has done really well. Thank you for all your comments on how not to lay a table, but is warming plates. Okay, before arriving in this country, I'd never heard of such a thing but my husband is a stickler, and every time we have a meal, the plates have to be warm. And you know what? It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Because it keeps yeah. your food warm. My do you guys do that? Yeah, my mom does it all the time. We, but we don't. We tend to not, no. Apart from no. for a roast dinner. So but, like, my mum will hmm. always, it will be a hot plate for a roast dinner. 
Right. Yeah. So you do do it. I think it, occasionally. It, yeah. it made sense in country houses because you have your argo and you you have your dining room, which is away from the heat. So you need you need to give the food the best possible chance to stay warm when you take it into a, a freezing cold room. <laughs> exactly. So, right. Yeah. So it does it does kind of make sense. The last kind of culture shock, I think, and I'm going to bring this to light, which I I think is quite a good culture shock, is the NHS. Mm. So in America, there's like you got to fork out a lot of money to have private insurance. And I remember arriving to this country and people in America saying my friends saying to me, "Oh my gosh, but you're going to have like the NHS, like you're going to have like socialized medicine." And I'm like, "I know." <laughs> but now I am so happy I have it. The NHS over here everybody is amazing. When people say, "Oh, but you can't get the best treatment." Yeah, you can. You can get really good treatment because as a doctor, um the doctors even if you you can't go private here and all that means is you're going to be seen a little bit quicker. It's a real it, it's brilliant. It is it's absolutely brilliant. brilliant. I've I've never used it and well pretty much never used it. I've used it because yeah. I've had children being born over here. I didn't go privately. I used it. Yeah. It was amazing yeah. and I didn't have to pay any a pocket out of pocket for having children where I think in the states you have to oh, absolutely pay to yeah. have your children. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> it's yeah it's it's a it's a fantastic so institution. It's a it is a brilliant it. institution. So I think for me that was um one of uh, a bright spot of a culture shock. Not so much the weather, but the NHS cheers to the NHS. Yeah. So um that is a a, a wrap of uh 10 my top 10 culture shocks again part 2 with Steven and Claire. We do hope you enjoyed it. Please just give any examples down below um that you can relate to any of the culture shocks that we've said here or any ones that you've experienced on your own. We will be coming back with you um very very soon with um again not only a pub quiz, but we're going to be doing a uh, a quiz about words. We're going to pick 25 words um that you guys wanted me to talk about from my last video uh British the difference between British and American words and I'm going to test these two here. Bye everybody.